Hey, what's up? How's it going, guys and girls? Very much a warm welcome to my channel today. The sun is hiding and the magpie is casting. Coming to you guys today with a live 1v1 battle. Featuring today, spawning in the south, it's going to be the USF forces of Don't Know. And spawning up in the north, it's going to be the Vermacht forces of Princess of Night. Where night is cunningly spelt with a K. That's a good pun. Haha, <laughs> I get you right there. Uh, yep, so good times there. Um, the map today is going to be uh, Farmian Villa Approach. Uh, this is a map which uh, I think was on the channel recently, maybe even as recently as, like, as my last game, can't remember. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, uh, what can I say about this map? I don't know, been in since the Overcommand and the USF forces were released. It's a pretty, pretty densely terrained map, lots of buildings, lots of line of sight blockers, uh, walls cover pretty much everywhere. So, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, terms of spawn bias, it's not symmetrical, but I can never figure out who it favours. I kind of feel like the player in the south tends to lose more often on this map, but that could often, I mean, that that, that could just be coincidence or just me getting, you know, just getting the wrong end of the intuitional stick on that one. Uh, so, uh, let's have a look at the opening builds here. Seems like Don't Know, going for two squads of riflemen off the bat, and that's pretty de rigueur for the USF, it's standard stuff. Seems like we got the ever-popular Ostrapen Doctrine being used for the Vermac player again. Oh, I'm seeing this more and more. These Ostrapen are actually pretty decent. Um, I saw them trading well against Tommies in a game between uh, Fortune and um, Alastor recently. Um, wow, I'm amazed I can remember that. Sweet times. Um, so, um... So yeah, uh, here we go. Here's a squad of five riflemen versus uh, six Ostrovan now. The Ostrovan have gotten themselves into cover, which does give them that accuracy bonus. Now let's see how they trade. Now they, they must lose this battle, but I just want to see how effectively they trade. The answer, not very. So might want to wait until they've got a bit more veterancy before they try that again. Um, but uh, let's have a look at the relative veterancy. So two kills got them about, I don't know, 33% of a rank of veterancy for the uh, riflemen. Whereas uh, these Strippen, as soon as they get back to base, I'll, uh, I'll check on their veterancy amount. Because I just it's just curious... Because obviously riflemen are worth more, so even though these guys did less damage, they vet up faster, and riflemen are worth more. So yeah, look at that—they've got slightly more veterancy. You can see when I when I click these two squads, you can see the little veterancy bars moving there at the bottom. Anyway, uh, so um, seems like uh, we've got another scuffle here in the north, uh, or at least we have the starts of a scuffle. Now I, I imagine the Ostrapen can defeat uh, rear echelons in combat. Rear echelons, of course, worth about the same as a chocolate kettle in combat. Um, actually, no, no. You know what? I'm actually wrong on that because Captain Price um, is a very skilled player and he uses rear echelons in combat all day, every day, and uh, he makes it work. So um, I take that back. <laughs> Forced to eat my own words there. Um, seems like a, a decent fan out of uh, troops from the uh, USF, combined with an early fallback on those Ostrapens, means that. Uh, means that actually map control sort of going in the way of the allied side for now. MG42 up in this building. There's another MG42 elsewhere on the map. Let's just quickly check. It's heading up to the north. So these riflemen here are going to do what they can. Looks like they're actually going to get around the arc of the MG42. It's pretty frustrating stuff. Firing orders cancelled. So Princess of Night pretty much uh, on, on the spot there. Now, uh, oh, wow. Uh, Ostrapen here getting a kill on some rear echelons. They move across the open. These riflemen are going to garrison a building behind the Ostrapens, and that will probably force them back. MG42 is going to finally suppress these riflemen here. I'm just trying to cover both fights as best. I can. Uh, so I think the Ostrophen are trading for damage right now, but they're going to be forced back. The riflemen at this range, you know, you don't want to mess with the Garand. Let's listen for the cliff ejecting. Bling! There it goes. Love it. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. The Garand's got a fantastic rate of fire, but you know what? Actually, here comes MG42. Here comes some Ostrophens. So uh, that's going to turn that into a real fight. Now we've got another scuffle up here. Pioneer's going to sneak through into the back lines of the American forces. Uh, and the battle here, I, I, I would imagine that... Oh, wow. Rifleman squad dangerously low here. They're going to need to pull back. He's not going to pull them back. God. There we go. There we go. Don't know. Taking a, taking a bit of a risk there. So... Uh, don't know has chosen his commander. I'm sure you all noticed because they're a veteran rifle, veteran rifleman on the field. So veteran rifleman has been the uh, commander of choice. It's pretty much either this one or the armor company, which you always see get picked. You know, the one with the M10 Wolverine and the bulldozer Sherman. Uh, and for my money, I prefer the elite rifle commander. I think that he's actually the better all-rounder, the better generalist, and uh, I think he gets the most potent units. Um, I think elite riflemen are pretty damn cool. I think the Sherman Easy 8 is better than pretty damn cool. I think that's just a great unit. So um, yeah. Don't know they're making a solid choice. This MG42 in mid still being a thorn in the side here for the American forces. Pioneers here making a grab on this fuel point. They're kind of trading that with a regular point here. These riflemen are well up into the uh, into the Axis back line at the moment. So just uh, doing what they can to frustrate. Seems like the tech choice for the Americans is going to go for the lieutenant. Of course, that's going to give them access to the flak half-track, the utility car of 50 cal. 
Uh, all potent units. I'm gonna. I hope that we see a half track. I think this is a decent map for a half track, actually. The AA half track. Also, the AA half track changed in the September se September 17th patch. It no longer has a 270 degree firing arc focused on the rear of the vehicle with a blind spot of 90 degrees at the front. It can just fire all the way around. Well, this means that you don't have to expose your rear armor in a fight every time. Um, so basically, yeah, that unit's gotten quite the buff. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I don't know if there are any other changes to that unit. I no longer have my patch notes around. Oh, hang on, no, they've just gotten buried under the mountain of rubbish on my desk. Let me just see if I can find out. Oop, you know what, I'm just going to try and frame the action as it goes and uh, look up the changes for the uh, American forces here a second, because I'd like to know if they actually changed the damage output on that half-track. Here we go. Da -da -da, the AA half-track, so... Yeah, okay, so AA mode was also removed, so it no longer has to switch to a separate firing mode, and it can just fire at aircraft. Uh, you don't need to tell it to go into AA mode, so... It's probably a buff, I would say, um, making it less micro-intensive. Now, uh, here comes the three-quarter ton ambulance. That's going to come out, that's going to be able to uh, heal American forces, allow them to reinforce. Seems like the Axis seat of power kind of settling around this building here and this one here. Now the two MG42s are providing good zoning at the moment and that's going to make it really hard for American forces to move out. And here we have the Lieutenant being suppressed and forced back by the MG42. Same thing's going to happen if they try anything around here. And I kind of think the Lieutenant was an odd choice because <clears throat> don't know knew that there were two MG42s on the field yet. He still went for the Lieutenant. And I kind of think they're going for the uh, Captain's better because then you have the option to go for the Pack Howitzer. And the Pack Howitzer... Um, is really, really strong at the moment. Um, it's a really strong unit, and it would counter these MGs quite nicely, I feel. Um, so, although, having said that, at three command points, he does get the rifle and flamethrowers, and that'll allow him to set up a flank and get a flamethrower up, uh, up to these vehicles. That'll be good. A 222 coming in here, costing 20 fuel and, like, I don't know, 200 manpower, something like that. Let's just uh, let's have a quick check here. 210 manpower and 15 fuel. Damn it, I never get the price of this thing right. Um, so, yeah, um, that's, uh, that's coming on out. This MG42 has now been flanked. We have the grenade upgrade. We do have grenades, so we could see a pineapple. And here comes a pineapple. Pulling on the building. Looks like Princess of Night is going to miss it. That's going to kill two men of the MG42 crew, which is now using incendiary rounds to burn down the lieutenant. The 222 scout car comes in. Going to look to add some damage onto these retreating squads, but I think it would be better off focusing these squads. The MG42 squad takes another pineapple. One man left retreating. That is a squad that could get wiped if these riflemen get into the building and get some shots on him in time. Looks like he's just going to sneak away. A medal deserved for that guy. Uh, uh, an anti-tank rifle grenade coming off these veteran riflemen. Of course, that's their level one veteran seat unlock. Gonna break the engine on this 222. And a second one from these uh, riflemen, just gonna ninja out the building and get it into the back of the 222. That's gonna destroy that scout car. So, uh, <clears throat> so no more sign of that. Now, now that there's just a lull in the fighting whilst the American forces fall back for a second, uh, shout out to Twiglets who left a comment on my on my channel saying that I should. Uh, I should scream when units start dying because it will make the casts more intense. Now, um, I haven't done that so far. I'm still thinking about it. Um, um, like, I uh, maybe I'll do it in the next cast, or maybe I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'll do it for flamethrower kills. Okay. If we see any flamethrower kills, I'm gonna be screaming. It's on. It's on. Twiglets. That's what's happening. I feel if I scream for every kill, I'm just gonna have no voice. Um, Sometimes I realize that my sarcasm can be hard to read. I am actually being slightly sarcastic. An S minefield here, gonna get some units here. Gonna get one or two men off the uh, off the lieutenant squad. Uh, you can tell it's an S minefield, of course, because only the German mines leave these fantastic signs saying, oh look, a minefield is here. Uh, so, rifles here, gonna take on these Struppens. They should win if they just stand and shoot, I think. There we go, they're gonna hold still now. Taking a look at the scoreline, around about a 34 point difference between them. The Americans leading at 475 over 441 of the Axis. Captain, God, there's like combat all over the map. Both players really, uh, really pushing the other's micro uh, multitasking. MG42 here in a good position. The facing orders on this MG need to be cancelled. Here we go. Now, now it's in a good arc. Now it's going to start suppressing this squad. A pineapple is going to come out, but the fallback comes down just in time. We've got a pack gun coming up for the American forces, so they'll be ready to counter any vehicle if it comes. Now the captain has been chosen after the lieutenant. Very interesting. Mm, most people tend to go for a major after either the lieutenant or the captain, but going lieutenant into captain is don't know. Uh, I kind of like this. It means that he has a lot of flexibility now. He can call in the M1 anti-tank gun. He can call in the pack howitzer. And um, uh, let's see, there's got to be another unit which you get. Da, 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 da. The steward, of course. Yeah, he can get the steward. Actually, you know what? He, he couldn't buy that. He's got the fuel for it. Oh, no, he doesn't. 
How much fuel does this do it? 70, my bad. So you could, can you tell I don't play Americans very often? I, I used to play them. I've, I've played them in enough games. I must have probably played, I don't know, 100 games with them. But I just, they're not the faction for me. I uh, I just, I don't know why. I just, I, I just, I don't really like their late game, I guess. Even though I quite like their late game because Jackson's an ace and I really enjoy microbreak them. But uh, yeah, I just don't like it as much as other factions, I guess. Anyway, some flamethrowers now coming out on some rifle squads. There's going to be a flame off up here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there we go. Told you I'd scream for a flamer kill. It's happening. Twiglet's my man with the suggestion. Um, you know, if you go. <laughs> if you guys have any feedback on. <laughs> oh no, whether you like the screaming for infantry deaths, is it making the cast more intense? <laughs> Is it making the cast more intense? I don't know. I don't know. So yeah, if you guys think that the, the screaming for infantry deaths was a good idea, be sure to make a post on the comments. Let me know, and uh, we'll keep it up. If you think it was a rubbish idea, be sure to post and say Twiglets. I'm sorry, your idea sucked. Um, whatever. Um, I'm just I'm trying out new stuff here. So uh, yeah. Um, so uh, a decent assault here. The MG42 not in this building. So uh, the Americans are actually free to access this area of the map. And they also command all three victory points right now. Pineapple going to force the stripping out of the building, but Princess of Night getting the uh, the decent micro there. Now, uh, in heavy cover is this MG42 at the back. That's in a good position. There's a pack gun here just in case we have a, a vehicle coming in. And we do have a Stuart about to enter the field in, a, in about 10 seconds or time or so, maybe even less. Um, so, oh man, these riflemen are actually getting picked down. The Ostrapens up to three star vet are actually doing really good damage. That's going to force that squad back. Now, here comes a smoke grenade from the riflemen. And <laughs> the pack gun is not cooperating, <laughs> cooperating here. It's just going to blow away the cover for this MG. That's a little frustrating. Flamethrower squad here. They're going to run on out. They're going to start. Oh my! <laughs> they're going to start flamethrowing these guys. You know what? I might just like cut down the screaming just a little bit to um, a more succinct scream. Like if, if these guys lose one, then uh, then they would. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's the original red alert flamethrower death scream right there. Uh, for those of you who play Commander on the Red Alert. So, uh, the Stuart's going to be deployed onto the north flank. Damn, this is a really hard game to keep track on. There's just constant combat going on all over the map. I'm going to trust you, the viewers at home, to uh, actually use the mini-map a little bit yourselves and just keep a track on what's going on, because I can only frame one thing at a time. Uh, looks like the Stuart's going to displace the uh, Flamer Pioneers in the north, and it's going to come in for a bit of a dive. Now, there is a pack gun, and the American player does know about the pack gun. So this is risky times here. This is risky times. Here comes the pack gun. That's pretty much locked the Stuart in the base now. And the Stuart will die to one more hit, I believe. It might be able to take one more. Whoa, he gets out by the skin of his teeth. That pack gun was just about to fire again. Crazy times. Hero Ostropin here making a dive for one of the command points. And this is a needed thing. About 140 points between the two players now. So that's like more of a gap than uh, than Vermax are comfortable with at this stage in the game. We're only 12 and a half minutes in. And, and Vermax traditionally have quite a strong opening game. So... Uh, anyway, here comes a smoke grenade. That's going to shut down this uh, this uh, MG42 for now, but that's just going to prompt the reposition. I'm not quite sure what that smoke grenade was about, actually. If you're going to fall back this squad anyway, the smoke grenade seems like a little bit of wasted munitions. How much? How many munitions is a smoke grenade? 15. But 15 munitions is a lot when you've only got 10. Um, or, well, you know, he had 25 or so before he used that one. Um, so, yeah, anyway. Uh, responding nicely to the uh, to the capture of the bottom command point uh, is don't know. He's going to try and take that one right back, and it's clear to me that his plan right now is to just push the Americans out. Uh, uh, sorry, push the Vermax out of the game with uh, with with good early and mid game dominance, and that is going really well right now. Let's just uh, let's just take a look at the teching here for the Vermax player quickly. He's escalated to battle phase two. There's no support armor core on the field, but he can afford it. He can also afford go to tech level three. I kind of like going to tech three and pulling out a broom bar or something because I think that kind of beats everything that's out right now. The American player has like 109 fuel and no major no major even coming so uh, that's a that's a thing wow wow lots of flaming going on here and uh and you all know what that means uh, as uh, as due to get flamed twiglets man i really i hope this is entertaining at least you i hope that somebody in the world is getting some value out of my random screaming um because um I'll, I'll be honest with you, Twiglets, this is a bit of a leap of faith on my behalf. I wasn't convinced that screaming for infantry deaths would be a good thing for the casts. But, you know, I'm open to suggestions. I'm trying it out. Uh, anyway, Stuart's, uh, Stuart's coming back in to harass the base, and it's, it's doing a good job of it, actually. I mean, there's, where's the pack gun right now? The pack gun's been taken out. Ah, sorry, I missed that. Pack gun's been taken out, but it's just been remanned. That is, like, the most crucial unit on the battlefield right now for the Vermac forces. It does take aim, but the Stuart is now safely, safely back here. And if I crack the tack, you guys can see... The story of the map is the story of the battle, just US dominance right now. Now, 
to uh, to her credit, Princess of Night has not folded and still has maintained survival with many of her units, many of which have decent veterancy. So she is um, down, but by no means out right now. And uh, has she built the support armor core? Yep, support armor core is coming. And I reckon a Stug would actually be quite a sexy choice right now. Um, you know, it would beat the Stuart, providing nothing goes terribly wrong. Um, and it would also just... I mean, the Stug's got decent anti-infantry. And at the moment, because because Princess of Night is forced into this defensive area, a Stug can actually command the field quite nicely. If you just kind of put it here, imagine it's Fire Arc. It's like all of this area. And um, that would be really good. And then you can transition it, like, you know, west or east as and when you need support in those areas and respond to the movement of the light tank uh, from your opponent, so that would be quite cool. A lot of fuel stacking up here for the American player. I'd love to see him go for a major. Um, plenty more flamethrowing going on here. I'm probably going to miss a flamethrower death here. And I ah! um, so, uh, yeah, it's um, it's not as easy as you think to keep track of all this stuff going on. Or, or, or I don't know, may maybe you're just really, really good at it. I don't know. I can't speak for you. Anyway, um, MG42 getting set up here at the back. That's going to really help clear this. Oh, but you know what? There's already a flanking squad of riflemen, but they're being suppressed by the MG42 in base. They're going to get some flames in. No, you know what? They're just going to go for the pineapple. That is a good pineapple. Killing two members of the MG42 crew. They're going to have to fall back on three-star vets. Not a squad you want to lose. A lot of rifleman squads suppressed in the open here, though. And good focus fire here. Princess of Night knowing which, which squad's a target. That was really good. Not wasting fire into the squads who are already suppressed. So that is good work. Captain back here is doing is doing work as well, though. You can hear him with his Tommy gun just blazing away. And uh, let's see. The rest of the map, there's nothing else going on. All of Princess of Night's units, all of the Axis forces are on the screen here or on the screen here. That is never a good place to be. So the siege right now is real. Now, if you were a British player, oops, sorry. If, uh, if Don't Know was a British player, this would pretty much be GG because you just build a mortar pit here, build a mortar pit here, and laugh. Um, if you have 800 spare manpower, I suppose, which you don't often do. But uh, all I'm saying is, if, if you have this amount of dominance with the British forces, you can just build a mortar pit in range of your opponent's base and make it hell on earth just to be them. Um, so that's like that's a real thing that can happen. Anyway, Ostropin squads now. Like, three squads of the Ostropin. I, I don't know that I've seen an Ostropin squad die, but I feel sure it must have happened, because it just always does. But anyway, Princess of Night, very good at keeping her units alive. Here comes the Stuart again. That's got 12 kills and it's now vet received one, which gives it a greater sight range. So that is pretty useful. Pat Gun has it acquired though. And one more shot's going to be the end of this Stuart. I don't like the way it's rotating. This is one more shot now and there's the shot. Pat Gun's ever the efficient anti-infantry killers. Now there's a pineapple onto the MG42 squad. That was not the three-star vet one, I think. I think that was the two-star vet one, not sure. Um, so anyway, but uh, a sad loss there for Princess of Night, who doesn't really have the manpower to accommodate losses like this. And if she loses, say, I would say one or two more squads, this becomes unrecoverable, I think. Um, but cleverly remanning the squad to avoid having to pay full whack on a new MG42, that's a good idea. Another pineapple coming out here. Ooh, it's just so much flaming going on. There's like four flamers for the US, two for the Germans. It <coughs> Pardon me. It's just crazy times. Um, and, uh, he, wow. Ostropin pushing up to the to the captain here, but there's uh, there's riflemen in their hind quarter, so that's not going to go very well. The scores now, Vermac dangerously low on tickets, down to like 117 under the 472 of uh, don't know. So uh, an Ostwind is the fuel spending choice. I don't know about this. You see, the other reason that the Stug is great is because it's like 20 less fuel. I believe the Stug is 80 rather than 100. It's 90. No. Oh, okay, well, that being as close as it is, then the Oswind isn't so bad. Oh, I'm sure that a Stug was 80. My bad! And, uh, I suppose the Stug has been buffed quite considerably. It is a very good unit now, so it would be a bit good if it was just uh, 80. Anyway, here comes another Pineapple, and that's probably, yep, that's going to do for the crew of that MG42 for the second time. So things definitely glum here for Princess of Night. Definitely on the ropes. But um, but still keeping in, still still keeping on, keeping on, still trying hard to uh, just just send pokes around the map, and um, and try and get something going, and definitely has the tools to do it. I mean, this army here is good. If you look at the top left, look at the top right. You wouldn't have thought the Princess of Night was on the losing end of this one. But uh, anyway, there is a major on the field now, and that means that we can see a Sherman Easy Eight. The fuel is there. We just need a little more manpower. I don't know. And you have to think when he sees the Oswind, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a. Um, uh, an easy eight, because uh, I mean, there's the, the easy eight just trumps the Osman utterly. Uh, so uh, anyway, the Osman's oh, doing good damage. I mean, it got eight kills in its first two mags. The Osman fires six rounds and then has to reload the uh, the flat gun on the back. So getting eight kills out of your first twelve shots, not too bad. 
not too bad at all. We see a, a call-in used here, and that's the White Phosphorus Barrage from the American forces. This is a dangerous dive, I'm not sure about this. Pursuing this deep into the American ranks is risky, because you just don't know. You could have bought a Sherman, could have bought an M1, and that would be the end of your Osman pretty much, if, if the Sherman was the choice. And, uh, you know, I think if you're going to take a dive, though, this far, I think it's probably worth going from here. Anyway, railway artillery coming in. Kind of a near miss on the first shell. Not not quite the bullseye-tastic railway artillery we saw in the last game I cast. And, uh... Able to make a break for the northern victory point. Good work. Princess of Night knows what she needs to do and is doing her best to do it. And uh, also has decapped the middle one, so that has vastly reduced the bleed. Down to 34 tickets, though. Damn! Princess of Night was under the clock for a long time there. She's going to have to work bloody hard to come out of this one. And, uh... Pack Gunner's in a good position, but here comes the easy 8 And now we're going to find out... Now, th this is the game-deciding moment, basically. If the easy 8 gets the Oswin, I think it's all over. But there's a Pack Gun in a decent position. Oh, the easy 8 just... It's like he knew. He just turns away at the last second. Good times. And the Oswin is going to have to make himself scarce. But the easy 8 did reveal itself there, which is awkward. Because if you're going to reveal the easy 8 but not get in for any damage, pretty much all you've done there is give away information. So this easy 8 is already slightly less potent than it was 10 seconds ago. Um, it's like a really small thing, but it's the small things that make the difference in really close games between high-level players. Now, and Squad of Ostropon is grabbing the southern point, we've got a Squad of Ostropon grabbing the middle point, and the Americans have retaken the northern point. So that being as it is, Princess of Night is still okay. She won't be find herself back under the clock. But, it's tenuous. It is tenuous. Oh my goodness, the Easy 8 is going to find the Oswin and it gets a hit. It's going to go around the, the, the south side of this building. It's going to come around. The pack gun in mid needs to rotate. It's not doing anything good there. The Oswin can only sustain two more hits and its soft rear armor is now facing the Easy 8, which is going to chase. There's blood in the water here. Well, there's oil in the water, really, I guess, and Oswin is a vehicle. Um, oh, but the pack gun getting the stun round in there. That was the, uh, the, uh, the target weak point ability there. Crucially coming down. That's going to force back this uh, this uh, Easy 8. And now there is a second pack gun on the field. Let me just try and find out where it is. That one's going way north. Not sure about the positioning on that pack gun. Um, maybe Princess of Night sent it up there before she knew where the um, where the Easy 8 was. I'm not really sure. Anyway, uh, oh dear, the pullback line on these Pioneers is going kind of a really awkward way. It's going to run all the way past the tank and get inflamed by these riflemen. Anyway, a pack gun is going to stalk the Easy 8. My goodness! If this Easy 8 falls, which it almost certainly will, one more shot, one more shot, there it goes! Oh my goodness, and with that, look at the top left, look at the top right. Oh my goodness, I, I've missed the Oswin dying somewhere as well. So actually, where did the Oswin just die? Uh, ah, sorry, I, there should be a wreck of an Oswin around here somewhere. I'm scanning for it. Anyway, wow. But I still think Princess of Night, oh, she's back under the clock. If it wasn't for that, if you look at the top left, look at the top right, the losses suffered by the Americans due that lo during that last phase of play. Pretty intense. Really pretty intense. We are losing a sector. I'm still looking for this Oswin corpse. Really sorry. I, I'm sure it's around here somewhere. I mean, it basically, it had to have been killed by the Easy 8 There's no other anti-tank really existing for the Americans. So I guess it just exploded around here somewhere? I don't know. Hmm, sorry about that. Uh, just skip back on the on the YouTube channel and you guys can watch on the mini-map and see where that died. Piece that one together for yourself. Sorry about that one. Um, there was a lot going on at that particular moment and I did miss the demise of the Austrian. Anyway, see, there's like scuffles like this are now going to be what determines the game. Nobody's under the clock at the moment. Oh, wow, and Princess of Night is going to force back the three-star captain with a three-star unit of Struppen. Lol, legendary Struppen and... She needs to hold this point, and she needs to hold mid. And if she loses the top one, she needs to take south. This is just a crazy, horrible place to be at 21 tickets under 472. But sometimes you've got to look at these situations and just say, you know what, if I make my objective not to win this game, but to see how long I, su I can survive, then, you know, that's the best, like, healthiest mental approach to take to the game. It's just, I don't care that I'm so far behind in terms of score. I'm just going to, I'm just going to try and... Uh, try and see how long I can stay alive. It's like a test for myself. <laughs> Guys getting, oh, getting flame left and right here. Um, why is this guy smoking? Did he just use a rifle grenade on himself? <laughs> this is the most troll tactic I've ever seen. But Princess of Night is just using attack ground. And another Ostwind is on the field. There is enough fuel for another Easy 8, actually. So that could be answered. And uh, American forces punching through. They're going to take this victory point. Looks like they've got command. 
of the one at the south. And with that, I, I'm not sure that Princess of Night can mount the comeback. These Struppens need to get on in here. This Flamethrower needs to get on in here. The Ostwin needs to go. It's going up to north, but... Is the middle victory... Ah, oh, she needs an MG in this building. This, this MG42 needs to be in this building, I think. The reason I say that is because that would allow it to change facing to respond to whichever way the Americans came at this point from. Anyway, here's a scuffle from the North Point. 17 tickets remain for Princess of Night, so keep your eye on that as this fight goes on. Princess of Night needs to start decapping this immediately because it takes quite a while to capture. White Phosphorus being used on the point just to prevent the capture. But you know what? White Phosphorus doesn't actually kill any infantry. It'll just put them down to zero health. So these Strippen will get the job done at the cost of their health completely but you know they're gonna actually get it done so there we go at 12 tickets remaining princess of night is off the clock again um american forces must be dispatched up here but i reckon that the ostwind is just going to maintain position kind of around about here on this screen just somewhere around here because that way it can respond to pressure at either of the points as and when needed now here comes the answering easy eight and i think running into the captain then the easy eight is going to come in and get a shot there we go the engine is down two grenades that's going to be a dead ostwind now I don't know that Princess of Night can hang on here. I mean, I, I kind of feel if she can, then she's got a massive edge, because look at how many squads are left for, for Don't Know. I mean, he really is on the ropes. Two pack guns are going to be doing a number. Oh, the target weak point comes down. That's a stunned easy eight, and here comes the final round. If this penetrates, where's the final round? Oh my god, it uses a smoke barrage! And one of the rounds hit the dead Oswin, so that easy eight survives. My god, against all odds. Now, there are some Ostrapin in this building, and they're poised to try and take a fight against this lieutenant. To try, So, Princess of Night really is applying pressure to all three victory points, which she absolutely needs to be doing. And I've got to say, there's like, there's just a touch of admiration here. Like, fighting on against the odds. This is like the most desperate, desperate fight. There's a grenade. That's going to do for these Ostrapin. That will be this point taken. Oh no, there's a minefield! Princess of Night, you beast! There's a minefield! Oh, these Ostropon are desperately microing for their lives. It's three Ostropon who've, who've like, like got lungs full of white phosphorus here. Fighting these riflemen. Oh, but the point is decapped. Now, if this point gets capped, that's probably game. And the riflemen are trading very well. And there's nothing else in the, in the, in the, in the hood. So here comes a dive at this victory point. This might be too late. Oh, she's gonna start getting the cap on this one! Oh my goodness, is this the response that the, the Princess of Night needs now? Okay, so she's going to be back on the clock now, and she'll be off the clock as soon as this comes off. So she's lost... Did she lose a ticket? I think she lost one ticket there, went from 12 to 11. So, but these, these guys are going to recap this point. She needs to... I, I feel like she just needs to pick up all these guys and just throw them at this point, or something. Uh, I don't know, I feel like that's it. I don't think... There, there can be no coming back from this, right? No, because the American forces are trying to cap mid as well. I, that's got to be it. The Easy 8's been repaired. That's coming back out. And these Ostropin need to be reinforced. I'm sure Princess... Wow, Princess of Night is actually floating quite a lot of manpower. That is... If, if that was all in Ostropin squad swarming the map... I mean, that's three more Ostropin squad she could call in right now. Anyway, back under the clock. And these right, this captain is going to trade for damage over time down to eight seven I don't think she even has time enough to decap this point now these this captain's getting massacred he can just he can just trade here for his life here we go now this point is decapping I'm gonna I'm uh, uh, this point is decapping down to three there's a fight going on in mid two it's gonna decap so princess is off the clock for just a second but the, the American vehicle crew is capping mid. Oh, this is a brutal plan. Oh, and that's going to do it. That's going to do it. The American vehicle crew is going to do it. A great thought there by Don't Know to just dive the easy eight. I mean, who cares if you're going to lose an easy eight? I mean, the game's over. You've won. So that, that is all you need to do. Drive the easy eight onto the middle victory point. Get the crew out. They can cap the point. Advantages of playing as America. Good times. Wow. Don't Know there. Don't know. I mean, look, at the end of the game, he had two squads of riflemen and an easy eight, which was represented here in the icons by the by the vehicle crew. <clears throat> so, don't know. It was really win or lose right then, I think, because I think if this point doesn't get decapped, or if this point got capped, so I mean, like, we're talking about, we're talking about about another eight seconds worth of time on either end of that, would have changed everything. And, and I'm not sure. I mean, it... it he had enough tickets, he wouldn't have been out straight away. 448 tickets is enough stock to mount a comeback. So that's definitely doable. Princess of Night, 
putting up a hell of a good game there. Very entertaining to watch. An incredibly close finish. And I kind of just think that if she'd have actually been spending this manpower on just, just, just summoning tons of Ostrophon squads, does she have the tier 2? Yeah, and bringing in Panzer Grenadiers too. Then, um, then that would have been completely different. Uh, I really think that that would have been completely different. Um, I kind of also think that a Stug would have been a better unit than the Ost than the Ostwin. I know the Ostwin didn't do badly, but I think the Stug fares better as the game goes on. Maybe actually, I don't know against Easy Eights. Maybe I'm wrong on that one actually. Um, and uh, yeah, don't know, don't know. They're putting up a great early and mid game, faltering a little bit as things went on. I kind of think, in a way, the pressure of nearly having had it but not quite. Was uh, was flustering, flustering. I uh, don't know a little bit there, but hey, wh whatever. He did what he needed to. He pulled out the win. The dive with the easy eight. The vehicle crew popping out is good times. So uh, yeah, thank you very much to everybody for watching. Um, if you have any suggestions, uh, whatever comments, stuff to improve, um, go for it. A little bit of feedback about the screaming for flamethrower deaths. Brackets sarcasm. Close brackets. Um, that'll be useful. Twiglets, thank you very much for the suggestion. And if anybody else suggests stuff, then I'll probably give it a go as well. So thank you very much once again. And this is Magpie842 signing out.